Hi there. Um, second video in my post punk pearls series. Uh, I hope it's going to be a series. So far, um, I've had a lot of good responses. So thank everyone who watched the video, the previous one, and uh, wrote comments and liked it. Basically, so thank you all for watching. Um, this time. I'm probably gonna um, surprise a lot of people because I don't think anyone in the vinyl community, if you do, let me know, but I don't think anyone in the vinyl community knows the following band act album. Um, it's a uh, one man project uh, from 1981 and uh, it's obscure as hell. So. I'm not going to alienate, alienate you by dis just describing the sound of this album because at the end of the video you're going to hear some clips of the LP and I hope you will be um, <coughs> uh, willing to pay quite a lot of money because, uh, well, it's this album. Ami Marie Verrückt nach Glück. It's a German album, obviously, uh, translated the title means uh, crazy for luck. This is a hard to find album. Um, this Cox has only five for sale, the cheapest one being about 40 euros, the most expensive one being 80 euros. Um, I paid a lot less than the 40 euros, so I'm really happy. Um, there's also a 7 inch on eBay at the moment, which goes for 30 bucks. So it's obscure. And is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, it's worth it. This person, Ami Marie, I don't know what his real name is. It's a guy, even though a website like uh, Mutant Sounds, um, a, a web blog that uh, discusses experimental, weird, and strange music, has mentioned or thinks it's a female that's singing. <coughs> that is because the guy, this guy, and it's the same as that guy, or that guy, or this guy, is actually using vocoders and, and uh, a lot of electronic machinery to just change about everything that he puts into his music. Um, Mutant Sounds described it as craft work with female vocals and Kind of is, but then again, I mean, Marie is a lot more minimalistic, a lot more, you know, setting the mood to something that will never come. Um, it is uh, an album that I discovered uh, thanks to a 7 inch I bought, which is this one. Hey, Magic Cut. Um, Spiel mit mir and uh, Wir sind zufrieden. Those two songs, this 7 inch cost me about 85 cents. Um, this is not anywhere on the internet. No one, I don't, I don't think no one knows it that it exists, but apparently both Discogs and Radio Music don't mention it. No copies are being sold on eBay. Um, so, this is probably even more obscure. Anyway, this is how I discovered the band. Finding this at a goodwill, looking at it, thinking, that looks pretty cool. Seeing what year it was from, 1981, pick it up. It's German, it's 1981, it's bound to be some new wave kind of thing. And it kind of is, but it's also pretty much a post-punk album. 7-inch. Um, um, like I said, it's minimalistic electronica uh, influenced by Kraftwerk, among others. Um, and it's recorded in Munich. And that's basically all I know of this band. It's pretty, pretty weird, because normally you will be able to find some information on, an a, on a band. So working with this album, I had a hard time 
finding information and talking about it. I can now basically mention the songs. The songs, they're, um, like I said, minimalistic, but they're also really brooding, really, they have a dark atmosphere. But if you listen to the lyrics and thank God I, I know a little German so I can understand what they're talking about, the lyrics are actually very, very happy, very joyous. Um, starting with the title song, Volk nach Glück, it basically tells you that the guy in question is lucky, he's feeling lucky, he's happy, he's joyous. Um, the song after that, Sad Bitter, uh, which means soft bitter, um, is a song about chocolate, the taste of chocolate. I mean, there's nothing dark and brooding about those lyrics, but the music, it, it, it actually takes you and, and wants to guide you to the dark places of music, yet the lyrics are so far away from what the sound is like which makes it a lot more interesting than if the lyrics would be about dark subject matters or whatever. Side one is actually the more upbeat, uh, if this album can be upbeat, it's more upbeat, let's just say that. Um, the uh, B side, however, is a lot more mel uh, melancholic, a lot more um, reflective of, of things. It's softer, there's more piano sounds on there instead of just simple electronica. Well, simple electronica, I wouldn't call it simple, because even though there's not a lot of, hap lot of stuff happening in the sound, the music is actually really, really, really good. Um, using Moogs, uh, what else did he use? Uh, synthesizers, arp strings, vocoders, uh, rhythm composers, just a lot of the good electronica, the analog el electronica stuff. Um, the guy just was able to make a debut album that he didn't follow up because there's no more Ami Marie than this album and two seven inches of which one I have. The other one is like I said 30 bucks on eBay and I'm not gonna get that. Not for that price. Um, so that's all. That's the legacy of Ami Marie. Two seven inches, one LP. Um, and I don't know who it is. Who is this guy? Where did he come from? Was he in another band? Was he doing other styles of music? It, it's, it's, it's one of the mysteries of music. You find something and you can't find information about that person. What has he done? Is he still doing stuff? Who knows? Maybe eventually the history of Ami Marie will be known, but for now, this is all there is, and uh, it's good. I'll be, uh, I'll be seeing you next time. Peace. Ich sage eins, ich sage zwei, ich sage drei, ich sage vier. Thank you.
Thank you. 